Welcome to PowerCode Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the Zoom R20's MIDI implementation. A big selling point for external hardware multi-track recorders today is whether or not the unit has built-in MIDI functionality or not. One reason is because, in many cases, external MIDI devices such as drum machines can then be triggered removing the need to record those specific tracks on the unit. Now, I believe that Tascam made a huge mistake by removing the MIDI implementation from its second generation Digital Porta Studio DP24 and DP32 SD units. This choice may have made the DP SD units cheaper and easier to support from Tascam's perspective, but that decision upset many loyal Tascam users looking to buy new or upgrade. Needless to say, Zoom did not make this mistake with its newer R20 unit. R20 comes with many feature upgrades while maintaining a MIDI implementation. For many, who are looking to buy new or upgrade their existing hardware external multi-track recorders, R20 really is a game changer. At the $400 price point and below, Zoom appears to understand how important MIDI is to its user customers much better than Tascam does. In this presentation, we are going to check out the Zoom R20's features first, and then we are going to look at how to connect a MIDI keyboard to the R20. And last but not least, we are going to do an overview of the R20's version 1 MIDI implementation. Let's start with the Zoom R20's features. This is a 16-track digital multi-track recorder, editor, and mixing workstation. It also has an LCD touchscreen and none of the other Zoom R series models have that. It also has gain controls on each channel and the faders are color coded. So if you look at the LCD display, the channels on the LCD display, those colors are the same as the trim knobs and the faders. The unit has eight XLR channels and two channels include line inputs. The units Channel 1 offers high Z, and channels 5 to 8 offer 48V phantom power. A built-in drum machine includes 150 rhythm and song formations in 30 genres. And the unit features 18 onboard synthesizer sounds, so you can plug a USB MIDI keyboard into this device and be able to trigger synth sounds that way. You can also import MIDI files to add pre-recorded bass lines, effects, and other audio parts to tracks, so it makes it compatible with other hardware uh, digital recorders as well that let you export tracks. EQ and compression are standard on the R20, and the unit records directly to SDHC and SDXC cards with up to one terabyte of storage. Again, no other unit in the R series um, can record up to this amount of storage. One terabyte is the highest and the R20 has it. The unit also has an AC power adapter that's included and a BTA-1 is sold separately. Now this is a Bluetooth adapter that allows the R20 to be controlled via the Zoom wireless control app on an iOS device. Now we'll check out how to use a MIDI keyboard with the R20. I want to start by saying that a keyboard is not the only MIDI device that you can use to trigger and record synthesizer sounds on the R20. You can use any MIDI enabled device that can connect and send note data using a USB type C cable. Now with this you're going to need to have a USB type C cable and keep in mind that the USB type C port on the R20 also supplies power. With the R20, you can also import standard MIDI files. It's pretty cool. This allows you to implement previously recorded MIDI tracks and choose the sounds you want to play those specific tracks in your productions. It's actually simple to have the R20 recognize a MIDI keyboard. 
First, use a USB Type-C cable to connect the MIDI keyboard to the R20. Refer to your MIDI keyboard's owner's manual for details regarding that configuration. R20 saves and manages recording and playback data in units called projects. A list of projects is shown on the projects screen. Now from the home screen, tap the round cog icon at the top right part of the screen and then tap projects to go to the projects screen. On the project screen, tap the round cog icon again at the top right part of the screen and then tap the on selection next to USB MIDI keyboard. Ensure your MIDI keyboard is configured to send note data and you should be good to go. To disable this feature on the R20, follow the same steps previously mentioned but tap the off selection next to USB MIDI keyboard. Then disconnect the USB Type-C cable from both devices. Now, let's view the R20's MIDI implementation to see what the unit can and can't do. The first thing that we need to understand on a MIDI implementation chart are the four MIDI modes. Now, a MIDI mode is one of many ways that a device can respond to incoming MIDI data. There are two parts to each mode, and one defines whether it's monophonic or polyphonic, which determines if it's multi-timbral or not, and the other mode determines which channel uh, that the device will respond to, either all or one. So let's start with the first MIDI mode, which is Omni on Poly. This is where the unit responds to MIDI data regardless of the channel and is polyphonic. Next is the Omni on mono. This is where the unit responds to MIDI data regardless of the channel and is monophonic. And this is rarely used, um, if ever. The third is Omni off and poly. Uh, this is where the device uh, responds to MIDI data on one channel and is polyphonic. Now this is a normal mode uh, for most keyboards that are not functioning in a multi-timbral mode. Last is the Omni off and mono. This is where the device responds to MIDI data only on one particular channel and it's monophonic. Uh, to the right of that are the, uh, the O, which will stand for yes. That means um, it does uh, function and no, uh, which is the X for it will not. And in our chart, we have four columns. The first is the function column, uh, followed by transmitted, recognized, and um, some remarks. So the function column, uh, what we're going to do is go down each row of that column and then go across to see if it's uh, the MIDI message is transmitted or recognized. So we'll start with the basic channel. Uh, function. So there's two uh, attributes of the basic channel function, which is default and charged. So when you look at default, um, the R20 does not transmit um, a default channel, but it does recognize channels, uh, MIDI channels, that is 1 through 16. And it does not transmit any channels that are changed on a unit, or nor can it recognize any channels that are changed on a unit. Let's move down to the mode. The mode has three attributes, that is default, messages, and altered. We'll start with default. R20 does not transmit default messages, but it does recognize mode one, which is Omni on Poly. Um, it doesn't transmit or recognize um, any messages outside of that. And the altered uh, attribute, um, when you look at an asterisk on, on this particular MIDI chart, uh, means not valid or not impl implemented, whatever uh, way you want to look at it. So altered is not valid. Moving down to uh, the note number function, uh, we're looking at true voice. And no uh, voices are actually transmitted out of the R20. However, it does recognize um, the MIDI note numbers 0 through 27. Now, this is important to understand. Under true voice, um, the R20 recognizes note numbers 24 through 124. 
and under the remarks it tells you what those notes are now it's important because any notes outside of 24 to 124 the R20 will transpose up or down in order to generate that specific sound. Moving down to the velocity function, we have two attributes here, which is note on and note off. Um, the R20 does not transmit any note velocity information. However, it does recognize a uh, note on uh, velocity information, but not the note off. Moving on to the next function, which is after touch. We have two attributes there. The first is keys and the second is channels. R20 does not transmit or recognize either of those. The next is pitch bend. The R20 doesn't recognize or transmit either. Um, no pitch bend information. Next, we have control change. Again, R20 does not transmit or recognize um, control change information. This is, of course, your different controls on your keyboard. Um, there are numbers generally. Um, for that represent each message that's sent our 20 doesn't understand or transmit that uh, the next function is program change um, again true number is here looks like not valid and the unit doesn't transmit or recognize either um, it doesn't understand um, or transmit system exclusive which is a disappointment because I think that would be really cool for taking snapshots of your mixes on the unit Next is um, more of the common functions like song position, song select, and tune request. Um, you know, these are where you would be able to control the R20 by um, out that is with an external device outside of the unit to either uh, find a song, select a song, uh, and, and so forth. R20 will not let you control it externally. So it doesn't transmit that. It can't control anything and it can't be controlled externally. Moving on is the system real time functionality and we're looking at the clock command. So uh, the tempo, things like that cannot be transmitted by the R20 and it can't be recognized by the R20. And last but not least is your aux messages, which include local on off, all notes, um, active sense and system reset. Um, none of those are transmitted by the R20. However, the only one that's actually recognized by the R20 are the all notes off. So if you send that from your MIDI keyboard or external MIDI device, it will shut down the um, notes that are being played on the R20. And there you have it. That's the MIDI implementation currently, which is version one uh, on the R20. You may want to stay tuned because future firmware updates may give more functionality uh, from, in regards to MIDI to the R20. So you want to stay tuned to Zoom's website for that. There you have it. Now, some will complain that the MIDI implementation on the R20 is too minimal, and that may be true. However, from my perspective, it's better to have some MIDI functionality on an external hardware multi-track recorder than none at all. Again, keep in mind that the current R20 MIDI implementation at the time of this presentation is version one. This could significantly improve with future firmware updates for the unit, which is another reason why you should check back to Zoom's website regularly for firmware revisions, especially if you own the unit. <laughs> if R20 users demand more MIDI functionality, Zoom may very well add it, so keep that in mind. R20 is a good first step for Zoom into the next level of external hardware multi-track recorders. It's by no means perfect, but practice makes perfect. Well, that is a wrap. If you like this presentation, give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every seven to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this presentation and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. Also, while you're here, listen to some of the music on the channel and check out some of the other videos and let us know what you think about that too, especially the playlist because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.